Hi Ruth. Hello. I'm 16 years old and I'm going to leave school soon but I'm really not sure what qualifications I'll get. I've been watching you on the telly and I, I think you're great um, and I'd like to sort of follow in your footsteps a bit really and thought I could try my hand at sales. Have you got any advice for me? My advice to you is very, very simple. Go out while you're actually learning and get a part-time job. That does two things for you. Number one, it gives you a bit of extra pocket money. Most importantly, you start to learn how to deal with people. Right. Because with selling, the key is communication. Mm -hmm. I didn't go into my first job selling. Okay, I'd got a few jobs on, believe it or not, a fruit stand where I was standing there <laughs> stocking the shelves. But eventually, and I actually saw this and I made a fortune from it, moved forward into the shop and started to sort of interact with people. That then helped me to get my first job. My first job was quite poor, but I was really? dealing with the public day in, day out. But every single job I've used is a stepping stone. Mm -hmm. And you literally go into a job and as long as you work hard and learn everything there is to know about it, because to sell, you've got to have the ability to communicate. Not only the ability to communicate, but also to understand the product and know how to convince the person who's standing in front of you. So you've got to be able to listen, yeah. communicate, right. and obviously then work out your figures to know that you're making a profit. Mm -hmm. Selling is not difficult. You don't need a qualification to do it. What you actually need is common sense and great communication skills. There are a lot of companies out there that could take advantage of me um, just because I'm young and stuff and because I don't really know what to look for and obviously it's going to be my first job and stuff. How do I know what's a good company and what's a bad company? What should I look out for? When I was 16 and I'd just sat my GCSEs, I actually applied for 32 jobs and I didn't get one of them. Wow. And the reason I didn't get one of them is because every time I went to the interview, there were different things that they wanted me to do. So they'd advertise a job as an office junior. Uh -huh. When I turned up for the interview, not only was it an office junior, but at the end of the night, they wanted me to literally run the hoover around. Really? And obviously I cleaned my own house, but when it comes to actually office-based work, that wasn't what I saw as being acceptable. The easiest advice and the best advice I can give you is very simple. An interview is a two-way street. It's not only whether the employer wants you, it's whether you want the job. Don't go for your first interview thinking you're gonna get the best job in the world but make sure it's the right job that gives you the right opportunities. Whenever I've gone for an interview, I've always said to the person that's interviewing me, I'm not looking for a job, I'm looking for a career. Oh, cool, yeah. That sets the level of expectation. That actually sets that I'm not gonna come from nine to 5.30 to do this job, I actually wanna move and progress. Being taken advantage of can only happen if you let them. And right. as long as you clear, and I'm talking about communicating in a very constructive way, you know, that we're talking about taking advantage. Are they asking you to work too many hours? Well, if you want to actually sell and make a lot of money, there's no such thing as too many hours. Mm -hmm. If they're asking you to do things like they did with me, which is, can you just do this? You know, I, I turned around and said, hang on a minute, I'm not a tea girl. But I communicated it in a way that made them go, well, okay. But a lot of people will try and push. But all you need to do is literally say, hang on a minute, I'm not here to do that. But as long as you're working hard and doing your job well, you know, they'll take that and move on. Mm -hmm. Ruth, when will I know whether this is a career for me or just like a job? How do you know? What's the difference? I don't actually think at your age you will ever find the career straight away. And if you do, then you're not really living life to the full. Really? You've got to do loads of different jobs, have loads of different experiences mm -hmm. to really find the one thing that's right for you. When I left school, I had no idea what I wanted to be or what I wanted to do. And if people say to me now, still, what are, you gonna, what are your plans for the next five years? It's simple. I knew what I wanted to become, which was wealthy and own my own business, but yeah. I knew that on the way to that ultimate goal, I'd got to do a few different things. I've worked in pubs, I've worked in shops, I've worked, I've had cleaning jobs, I've done, they were all part-time while I was doing a full-time job. Oh, cool, so yeah. when people look and say, you know, you've got, I, I own two separate businesses, I'm financially secure, oh, that comes easy and you're 29 years old. You can see all the different routes that I've done to get there, but how do you know you don't like it unless you try it? Never be one of those people that say, but what if? Right. Because if you do it and you don't like it, you can not necessarily change, but you can actually go in a different way. I mm -hmm. use three jobs to be stepping stones to get mm -hmm. to a sales director's position at the age of 27. And then I have other people say, how did you do that? Well, it's simple, I worked hard, uh -huh. and I did do the jobs at the bottom of the chain to understand how fundamental they were when you get to the top. 